Well, I got another video update for you. So, as you've seen, I installed this uh, Vivor diesel heater, and man, the thing works great. It puts out a lot of heat. You know, in the last video, I put this uh, Mylar around the ceramic insulation, that high heat insulation, and then I plumbed everything in through the house and insulated all this and built this this out in the other the first video. And then uh, to power the unit, I've got this. Uh, orient power battery and this is a 230 amp hour 12 volt battery and it works great i've been very pleased with it and uh, you know the one thing i really like about this battery is it has a an on and off button right there and you know you can also check everything with the with the out and so it just makes it very easy but a lot of you guys were saying that it's not good for these diesel heaters to backfire and you know you, you don't want to starve it for power so let's say you know like here at my house our power sometimes it, it flickers on and off during a bad storm and so you know that's fine if you're plugged into you know a, a battery like this and you're off grid but you know, I was sitting here thinking, I was like, well, you know, I, I'm just always worried that I'm not going to keep a good enough watch on this battery. And, you know, even though I've got the, the app, you know, sometimes I just forget about it. And so, uh, so I was sitting here thinking, well, why not just take and figure out a way just to keep it plugged in to the grid, but then have a way to fix it to where if it, you know, uh, the power did go off, then uh, I could make it, you know, have like a backup power and, keep from turning the unit off now I, I know you're wondering well how are you going to do that if you're plugged in to the grid well let me show you my plan is to take since i don't have uh any kind of electrical outside i'm just going to take me a two inch hole saw and i'm going to drill me a hole right there in that little formular board that i, I put on there and it's going to go through the uh the wood that i have sandwiched in there and some more insulation like i said i overbuilt it and then i'm going to take this right here i found this online this is a like a shore power outlet and you've got a weatherproof housing there and then now you've got a, a way to get your your uh, household power, your 110, 120 volts, whatever you want to call it, outside. I can plug this end into a power station. And I know you're going to say, well, not all power stations have the UPS function. That is true. But some of them do, and I do have one that does. And uh, I thought, well, if I can take and plug this end into here, just like this, and then I'm going to plug that end into my power station that has the UPS function. And then I'm going to plug the power station in to grid power. Let's say I'm running the diesel heater on grid power. And let's say my power flickers or shuts off. Then that's fine because that UPS function on my power station will kick on within 10 milliseconds. And it's going to run the diesel heater and it's not going to cause it to turn off and it's not going to spit and sputter and backfire and none of that it's going to just remain running that way if you know the power does go off like i said and i know that it's gone off and you know it's running on that power station then i can just let it run on the power station as long as i want and it'll give me time to shut the unit down and then i can already have my battery right here charged up raring to go so you know i'm just saying I think it's smarter just to run it on that UPS function and then run it on the battery than to run out of power and let it, it uh, backfire then. I know that's a lot of rambling, but I'm going to show you. Let me get started here. I'm going to go ahead and start by drilling a, a two inch uh, hole in this piece over here. Now, if you're wondering how thick that hole was, <laughs> it was pretty darn thick. I had to drill through several layers with a hole saw that many to be exact and if you're wondering what's going to seal it up well it does have a little rubber gasket there that fits in behind the outlet just like this and then when the outlet's not in use and you have that little cap that goes over the front right there to protect it and keep water from getting in and out now if you're wondering you know what all can you run on this well you can run pretty much you know anything you can imagine because uh, this is a, a 12 gauge cable and you can see that it's got it's grounded and then you know you can see the outlet there it's got the special plug on it I did a 15 ounce but uh, this thing is really good quality uh, it was only like 15 16 bucks on Amazon I'll put a link in the description for it if you're interested all right so there you go guys went ahead and got my plug installed got the little flap 
hanging down to the side there and I went ahead and plugged in this uh, adapter here uh, that come with the diesel heater that converts it from 110 120 volts to 12 volts uh, so it's AC to DC and uh, that way like I said I don't have to you know worry did I over discharge my lithium iron phosphate battery or is the power going to go out and cause this thing to backfire and end up ruining my electronics you know this just makes it easy so you know like i said on the inside i'm going to plug the inside of this to the ups uh, power station that i have it's just a power station that has a ups function if you've got a power station check and see if yours has that ups function uninterrupted power supply you know you can uh you know prevent your diesel heater from frying itself you know just by providing it with good constant power and one reason why i went ahead and put this outlet here let's say in the summertime i want to pressure wash my car and i can plug my electric pressure washer right into that and you know plug it on the other side plug it directly into the the wall let's say you know i want to run a battery charger out here to charge my lithium iron phosphate battery outside then all i have to do is just put a little plug a charger into that or put a little three-way splitter on there and i can run my diesel heater and charge my battery at the same time so you know there's plenty of good uses for one of these little outlets like i said they're under 20 dollars. you know if you're sitting here saying well you didn't have to drill a hole that big you know it's a two inch hole and uh you, you know that's going to be a lot of you know air getting through there well it's got that gasket on there i'm going to go back and take and and some of the little plugs the two inch plugs that i i cut out i'm gonna go ahead and put a little slit and i'm gonna slide them over the electrical cord and just stuff them back in the hole and that way i'll have a little bit of insulation and just seal the air from the cold air from getting in so i just hope this video helps somebody out give you a good idea of how to get electricity out your window right there now i know there's many different ways to do it there was different ways that i was contemplating now i thought about taking and just drilling a small little hole just big enough for a drop cord to fit through there and cutting an end off the drop cord or if you got a bad drop cord just run it through there and and uh, put you an end on it plug it into the wall on the inside of the house and then leave the female end out here for you to plug into and that way you would just only be drilling a hole the same diameter of the the uh, drop cord so truthfully that'd be a good way to do it but it doesn't look that good and i figured this is going to be more of a permanent setup for me because i'm going to put my air conditioner on here uh, in the springtime i've got a medea window unit air conditioner that i'm going to run on solar panels uh, that i've been using on solar panels for years and i just put it in the window and then in the when it starts getting cold pull it out and put my diesel heater up here like i said if i need power outside to run you know a battery charger to charge a battery on my car or the, the anything you know i've got power out here outside now and you know if you've got a different way of doing it put it down in the comments let me know how you would have done it all right guys i just wanted to show you on the inside what it looks like you can see there is the vent for my diesel heater sitting out the window right there and then you can see there's where i made that that hole with the hole saw or the, the little cord to come through and you can see i went ahead and put a little uh, just a styrofoam there to to put in there to you know keep any drafts down and then i've got that little cord plugged into this marks on power station that i reviewed several years ago and i'm not even going to recommend this one to you anymore because we've gotten some better ones out now that's uh you know stronger and cheaper with more features so you know i'm not even going to try to recommend this one to you but you can see i've got the power turned on and the unit is plugged up here in the back and it's plugged up into the the wall over there and then what i'm going to do now is go ahead and turn the unit on or the ac part of the unit on let's see if i can get it to light up there we go now it's lit up so now this has power all right you can see i'm outside now i've got the uh unit plugged up to the adapter and you can see this one here was for the battery i just got it zip tied to the table so it don't the cord don't keep falling off but you can see this cord plugs in there goes to the ac adapter and i'm fixing to kick the uh the unit on start heating, start heating. <laughs> and we're going to let this thing uh, get up to temperature and you know, I'm going to run it just a few minutes, even though it's like 70 freaking degrees right now. I'm going to take one for the team, guys. So if you haven't liked and subscribed to my channel, I'm burning up for you guys. I'm getting nice and toasty. 
and heating my house up just for the sake of a YouTube video. But anyways, just going to show you right there. Here's your little screen. Now, I'll be honest, I've only ran this thing uh, just twice. I cranked it up the first time, and then I cranked it up one more time uh, during the when it got cold. I might have ran it three times. So, I'm not familiar with the control panel yet. I've not got it set up on Bluetooth yet. Somebody asked me, hey, did you get it set up? No, I was having a little bit of a hard time trying to get it to pair with my phone. And so, yeah, I haven't messed with it anymore just because it's been so freaking hot uh, here in Tennessee. There it goes. There goes the click, click, click. Which a lot of people talk about that click, clicking noise, but eh, that don't bother me. I can't hear it on the inside. And then there's a little bit of smoke. Just a tiny little bit of smoke comes out. And don't mind all the totes, guys. They had a good deal on these the other week at Staples, and I went in there and bought a crap load of them. I think they were $8.99, and then you got 100% back on your Staples points. So in essence, I paid nothing for them. <laughs> they were free. So, you know, that's a really good deal. The sale's already off now, but keep a watch out on Staples because uh, you'll, you'll find a good deal on some stuff from time to time but there we go the thing's already fired up and running i'm gonna let it run for probably i don't know five minutes i'm gonna get it all nice and up to temp and then i'm gonna pull the plug on the back of the power inverter and take it off a of grid power and just let it run on on the power inverter and see if uh you know the uh the uninterrupted power supply works good enough to keep this from you know backfiring so stay tuned now, if I had two of these, there's no doubt. I, I believe I could. I believe I could heat the most of the house and make it comfortable. Now, there's probably going to be some cold spots throughout the rooms, but uh, you know, for the most part, you're not going to freeze to death with with something like this. So, if you got a generator and you think that's going to put out as much heat, uh, just running electric heaters or something like that, as this thing does, nah, you're you're wrong. This thing really does put out a lot of heat. So as you can see, I've got everything up and running. I got the, the vent from the diesel heater coming in to the house right there. You can see the diesel heaters right there on the back porch. And then you can see the the uh, cable that I just drilled through the outside with the hole saw. Uh, I've got it coming through and I've got it plugged into my Markson power station. I did a review on this one a couple years ago and you know I would recommend it still but you know they've got some new ones out that's better more features and even more powerful with for less money now the uh, technology on this stuff is just you know just crazy how fast they keep coming out with power stations and so anyways I've got it plugged in uh, to the unit it's running on AC power you can see right there that the uh, unit is using 45 watts of power and it says that it's charging. Uh, it says that it's uh, got input power, 250 watts coming in. And the reason it says that is because I've got it plugged into uh, grid power. I've got it plugged plugged in right there. And then this cord here goes over there to the wall, and uh, you know is plugged in to 110 volt outlet. And so that's where that 250 watts is, input watts. Now the watts below that is. Uh, what the uh, diesel heater is running on. You can see 42 watts of power, 43 watts of power, 42, and so 44. And so when you first start it up, it uses a, a lot more on startup, and then when it's cooling down, it uses a lot more power. But you know, I just wanted to show you guys that I've got this thing running on full blast outside, and I'm telling you, it's, it's hot. Just standing right here in front of this thing, I mean, you can see right there, 171. I mean, I can't keep my hand up there. I don't know how true this thing, 197. I was getting off there. Uh, gosh, two. Oh, it's hard for me to focus this thing and get a good shot. My God, I can't keep my hand in front of it. I can tell you that, it's that damn hot. 220, 219, 221. Literally, I can't keep my hand in front of the vent. I'm end up getting burnt. But uh, man, this thing is on high and it is really putting out the heat, guys. And so uh, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna see if this thing can, you know, run without spitting and sputtering. So what I'm gonna do is bring you guys out the door here. 
out the door. Trying not to get all my junk in the, in the picture here. You can see there's the exhaust. And muddy, it is cooking. You can see there's the, the heater, it's on high. And I'm gonna set you guys up right here on the tripod. And uh, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna unplug the uh, power station from the house. And we're gonna see if this thing does any spitting and sputtering and acting stupid, makes any noise, or puffs out the exhaust, or, or any of that. I'm gonna try to get you guys a good shot there. And uh, I'm gonna go inside and unplug it. I'll yell for you so here in about two seconds. All right, so I'm fixing to unplug it. All right, I unplugged it. There was no no spitting and sputtering. Couldn't even tell anything. Anything was wrong. I literally didn't even didn't even tell that the grid power was no longer plugged into the power station. So, you know, in a power outage, guys, uh, if you've got a, a power station, plug it up. If it's got that UPS unit, plug it up to your diesel heater because uh, you're going to end up frying your electronics if the power. Uh, flickers on and off like it does at my house all the time so let me just prove it to you and just so you guys don't call me a liar there's the the plug that was plugged in the back of the the uh, power station you can see this thing is just running on the on the power station and you can see right there it's using it says it's using about 70 69 70 watts and then you can see right there just to prove it to you even further there's no input wattage it's at zero so it's there's no power coming in to the power station and then another way to prove it to you is this right here right there it shows 199 which i'm not getting a good reading because i can't get my hand down in there and videotape it and get it on the screen very good for you yeah 205 Trying not to get burned here. 228. <laughs> so you guys get the picture. Not making this stuff up. If you got a UPS in your power station, make sure you use it. And if you guys are interested in this little cable, little outlet that I put in today, uh, I'll put it in the link in the description. If you're interested, my diesel heater, the Vivor Toolbox diesel heater, put it in the description. And also the Orient Power uh, battery right there. You know, that thing works great and i like that it has that on and off switch uh, it's just safer when you're connecting everything off just turn it off and uh until next time guys i uh, appreciate you watching i gotta turn this thing off i'm burning my nuts off in here <laughs> uh, thanks for watching please like and subscribe to my channel check out my other uh, diesel heater videos and uh all my other content so see ya